and you guys thought you were done with me on the GoPro. I don't think so, boys. We're on a little solo mission here today. We're doing some cool stuff, okay? Announcing a big sponsorship, which we've already uh, lightly announced a little bit, but finally getting some of the product on my rigs. And then also, too, before we go any further in this video, the Typhoon giveaway ends this Sunday. I think it's the 26th. If I'm wrong, I'll put the date down here. But that ends. One of you guys is going to take this damn Typhoon home. All you got to do is get yourself some Race Rebuild Repeat merch from racerebuildrepeat.com. Badass stuff. We're super happy with how it all turned out. And thank you guys so much for buying as much as you have so far. It's keeping the operation afloat, which is badass. But now it's wagon time. I'm taking the wagon because we've got a little bit of room back here. Yeah, there's some old junk. But uh, we got to load some stuff in the back. So we'll see if this thing will start. Come on, baby. Old 307, dude. And it squeaks hellaciously on startup. Oh, you hear that? <laughs> yes, dude, I love this car. Oh, boys, we got a service engine soon light here on the Caprice. I don't know what to service. The whole engine? It's an old 307. That thing should just be serviced on out of here. Maybe LS swap this thing or something, but. Before we get too deep in this video, I wanted just to remind you guys that if you do have any problems with your merch orders, I think there's been like five orders that have had issues, which is astronomically low compared to the total amount of orders. But if you have any problems at all, just email me. The email's hooked up into your receipt. You can reach out to me on Facebook. You can do whatever you want. I'm the guy handling the customer service stuff. And we wanna make sure you guys get A, get what you deserve, and B, make sure you guys are happy. So if there's any issues or any quality concerns or anything, don't feel like you can't reach out just completely message me email me do anything you want and we can get it figured out for you but we're on our way to our friends over at bell tire right now my uh, friend is a store manager over there and he actually accepted the shipment for me so i no longer have access to a warehouse with a fork truck so uh, i had to have someone that has that kind of stuff help me out so we got a pallet full of things here i'm only gonna take a couple things though because i'm in the wagon right now but I'm really excited to get this stuff all right, boys, got the goods back here. So I have some unboxed freaking test mule level wheels. So ITP wheels and tires really went overboard with this deal with us. So they're actually out of stock on all of their Pro R beadlocks, which I think they're coming back in stock really soon. But when we made the deal, they were out of stock. And they sent me the ones that they use for their photo shoot. So I actually have like the first set ever, which I'm super jacked about. So. Uh, we need some beadlock bolts and then I need to mount my tires on here. So I got some cool tires back at Frank's that we're gonna put on these things and I'm, I'm really excited. It's a little bit older of a tire, but uh, I've never had it in this size. So I'm really excited to see how that works out. Mid-state baby, we're back near the old stomping grounds back in uh, Buena Vista. So I gotta get some beadlock bolts for these suckers. And then we're heading off to Frank's to do this little solo mission and maybe do a little testing. I got some more things I wanna do to the car too to make sure that it's uh, gonna be good with these wheels. And if you haven't picked up on it yet or seen posts on it yet, this weekend, we're actually gonna go racing. So we're going back to the Settlemeyer Ranch, the race that I rolled over in last time. That sucks. Dang it! The race that Frank broke an axle in and almost won. Oh no. Right, we're going back in full force, me and Frank, and we're going to do some racing this time and see what we can do. So, we're going to be more prepared. We're going to have uh, more reliable cars. Frank's apparently also going to race sportsman and pro. I don't know how that works out since he's obviously a great driver and I feel bad about him being a sportsman, but hey, it's their call. And uh, yeah, I'm really excited to see what these things can do. Ooh, late night tip. Chill out. Nope, nope, no 3.6 Mafia right now. All right, guys, we got the uh, goods here. We got 64 brand new beadlock bolts and washers, and I bought myself a set of snap ring players because God knows when you need those things. Huge shout out to Midstate, dude. This place rips. I miss being real close to here because this place always had everything we needed. So now we're going back to Frank's, and uh, yeah, we're going to put these suckers on and then maybe do a little suspension strap job so I can take some more ride height out of the freaking Pro R and hopefully not roll over again. Phew. Well, boys, we're back in the old stomping grounds of Frank shop. It feels so weird to be here without him, but uh, uh, like I said a couple of videos ago and in and, and this video as well, he's off. This week was supposed to be just take time off. I'm gonna work 
and uh, edit all these videos that we got from our big trip and then Frank gets to hang out with his kids and all this stuff but you know with what happened with Brandon we didn't really get to do that so I'm just taking care of a lot of other little stuff here so uh, yeah one thing I didn't really talk about much on the Utah trip this is supposed to be brought up later but our friends at Rabbit gave me these cool running lights for the front end of my car just to make it a little bit different looking and uh, wow this thing is cooked though from the ride back it was pretty nasty but check out these running lights like they're actually super sick and they kind of accent the front of the car and just make it look way different so never like super into like fully fully standing out but being able to identify someone when they're across the dunes or coming up on a trail or anything like that's really important so Ravik has uh, these lights and they're just super simple plug and play they're hooked on with 3m tape shouldn't be going anywhere anytime soon but today the plan is to switch out obviously the paddles for some uh, dirt tires for our big race coming up here and then we are also going to be trying to do some strapping in the rear so if you guys remember last time out at the Settlemeyer Ranch race my car rolled over I don't want to do that again mostly because I don't want to have to fix this whole side again part of the reason why it uh, did do that was because it has a little bit of an issue with ride height obviously this is set up for trails this is set up for dunes so if you're gonna be short course racing it needs to be lower but if I lower the car anymore at full droop which you'll see in a minute when we work on this uh, the springs are loose so this is as loose as they can get right now if I take any more preload out when the suspension droops all the way down the springs will be just loose on the shock which you obviously don't want so to make up for some of that droop we're going to try to strap the suspension up a little bit so we're not going to strap the suspension down to compress the shocks we're just going to hold it so we can take ride height out of it so ride height obviously be a lot lower hopefully we're going to start with the rear because i think the rear is probably the biggest culprit when you come into a corner sometimes what happens is uh and if you like you say you hit a berm or something the wheel will cantilever on the suspension and the suspension will go under itself it's kind of an artifact of the x3 suspension as well if you don't have it strapped down so we're going to work on that and i can show you a clip from the last time at the Sotomayor ranch on what i'm talking about when i hit the corner the suspension essentially unloaded and then the tire kind of cantilevered under the chassis and then it raised the ride height up which got the car really really skinny and then uh, obviously the center of gravity is higher you know all sorts of things go wrong you don't want the car to be skinnier you don't want the center of gravity to be, to be any higher uh, and then it just rolled over which sucked so Keaton the guy I was racing he's fast so I don't know if, uh, if I would have had a chance but I would have rather lost than roll over so uh, this time we're going to be coming with some straps in the rear I don't have any straps for it unfortunately but what I do have is a lot of uh, ideas that you might call jerry rigging so we'll do that first things first we're going to get the wheels in here Frank's already got a set of Terra hooks coming uh, that we've mounted up when we were in Utah, which I think are the ones over here. I'll get these uh, tires in here. They're actually 33 inch Coyotes. I'll show you in a minute. And then I bought some new beadlock bolts for the rims. So we'll mount those suckers up, put them on the car, see how they look. I'm very excited to get back on a shorter, more aggressive uh, trail tire as well. So let's get started. <laughs> All right guys, got two of these mounted up. I figured I'd go back to the uh, good camera instead of the GoPro here. So this is the 33 inch Coyote on the ITP beadlock. And this is a 32 inch, sorry it's very dirty, but it's still brand new, ITP Terra hook on a beadlock for an X3. So I figured I'd compare these things really quick and show you guys the reason why I went with these over these. 
So as you can tell, these are a little bit bigger being advertised as a 33, these are a 32. And these ITP Terra hooks have always worked well for everything. So big voids between the tread, which is really good for sandy conditions. You know, it rolls over slightly, so you're able to get some good slide, but it still has a lot of side bite. And it's a very light tire. This 32 inch weighs in at a hair under 40 pounds. So pretty good tire. And it is also just a little bit softer of a carcass all around. And my theory here is that with this big Pro R that weighs a ton, I think this thing weighs in somewhere around 25, 2600 pounds curb weight, this just isn't a stiff enough tire for the car no matter what pressure you're running on. So the Coyote, it is a little more squared off of a tread pattern. It still has huge voids between the tread, not quite as big as this one, but the carcass is just more stiff. So for a 33, it weighs in at 48 pounds advertised. I haven't weighed one. I would bet it's a little bit lighter than that actually. Something like this, I think a little bit stiffer carcass overall is really gonna play in better to the heavy car and it's gonna allow the car to not have like a rubbery shoe underneath it. It's gonna have a nice stiff tire which is gonna make the handling and everything just a lot, a lot nicer. Now you guys have seen the Coyote before on the Turbo S when it came out. They came out with a 32 inch, whereas this is a 33. Turbo S was also a heavy car. And honestly, I'm kind of surprised that when Polaris came out with this Pro R, they put those Maxxis Rampage tires on it. I don't really like those. I don't think they grip very good. These ITPs, they're made in the US. That's one of the reasons why I love this company so much. And this beadlock is just sweet looking. This is one of my favorite looking beadlocks anywhere and it uh, retains the stock offset too. This is a six plus one, meaning it's seven inches wide, and it's basically the same offset as stock, so we're not gonna have any crazy feedback or anything like that. In the dunes, not a big deal. You can run a wider offset, no problem. But when you're trail riding, you're hitting things back and forth, you're hitting bumps, you're hitting ruts, you don't want all that translated back into your steering by having a big cantilevered edge out there. So, these six plus one stock offset, it's gonna be really good, it's gonna handle well. And I'm thinking this thick carcass here is gonna play in very, very well to what this Pro R can do on a short course. So really, really excited to try this tire out. I think it's gonna be great. Oh yeah, boys, this sucker is ready to rip. So we got all four mounted up. Haven't checked pressure on them yet, I'll do that. And then we're gonna lift the old Pro R up and get these things put on. So until next time, 35s, but uh, it's gonna be 33 ITP coyotes for the next little bit here i'm excited to see how they work so i think we're going to go outside and test them on the test track too so hey get to run the car a little bit get to see what they feel like i'm jacked hell yeah boys there's wheel number one mounted up three to go i think these look freaking sweet on here and i also like the offset too nice and tight keep the car from having any weird geometry issues but while we're back here on this side if you guys remember last time when i was at the uh Settlemeyer Ranch short course race. I broke this axle. Definitely got something going on here. Broken axle. And the dude that was there, believe it or not, had a spare one, but it was bent. And so maybe I shouldn't be letting out the sauce, but I do have a brand new axle and I'll turn this bent one into a spare. So I think, you know, the long-term effects of having a bent axle is probably not great. So we'll uh, put a fresh one on this side while this wheel's off and then mount the rest of these suckers up. And then go for a little test ride, dude. I'm pretty jacked on that. glad you guys got to see that on time lapse up here because that was quite possibly the easiest axle replacement I've ever done. The hardest part was getting the rotor back on to line up with the caliper and the brake pads. Wow. But the uh, rear is ready to go. We got one more up front to do. I'm going to get to lower this thing down and I'm not sure if I want to ride it first or if I want to try to do limit straps first. Limit straps might have to wait for another day because we're kind of running out of time here. So. If you guys are watching this thing tonight, it is literally 3.30 Eastern right now. And uh, yeah, look at that. My friend Scott just messaged me. 3.30 Eastern and you're watching this at what? 7, 7.30, 8 o'clock? It's a tight time frame here. But like I said, these are both done. This side's done. Well, no, that side's not done. Okay, we'll have to do the entire front end. Well guys, there's the finished product. I think these look awesome. The contrast with the gunmetal on the black with the teal, 
I think that all looks really cool. Unfortunately, this thing is still so grimy. On our way back from Utah, there was like some serious areas where there was salt on the road still. And this thing just got covered. Like, look at the interior, it's so gross. But that's not gonna stop me from going on a little test ride. And then of course, before we go to the race, I'm gonna get this thing washed up. But I'm gonna uh, head over to the GoPro right now, the head cam, and see how we feel about these uh, 33 inch Coyotes. This is my first time ever on 33 inch Coyotes and really my first time on Coyotes ever. Uh, I think they're gonna be awesome though. I'm excited. Heck yeah, boys. I'm excited to be out here riding this thing. I wish Frank was here, but he's off having fun with his kids. Some well-deserved time off, so. I always like to let the motor on this thing warm up too because this is a forged motor it has forged uh, pistons in it so they do take a little bit of time to warm up and my gosh is this thing gross Ugh. well time to strap up and uh run around a little bit i don't think i'm gonna hit these jumps because honestly i was never really comfortable hitting them in the first place i'll definitely hit that one over there but uh those ones man i don't know it boys i really appreciate you guys tuning in here today thank you to itp for sponsoring us i'm so happy to have a sponsor like itp on board one of the last companies anywhere making things in america still and that's awesome these are made in the u.s those are great tires like the uh, sidewall stiffness like i thought is totally there with these things and it allows the car to handle like it's supposed to without rolling the tire over so great 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 tire huge shouts out to itp for that and thank you guys for tuning in on this little journey today. The axle held up shockingly, that's great. Uh, I appreciate you guys tuning in and watching me work alone. It's a little bit weird, I'll be honest, but uh, Frank will be back soon, which is awesome. He's again out having fun with his kids and we'll be racing real soon. I got one more video coming on Saturday morning and then the race will be Sunday morning. So we gotta do some work on this Typhoon that we're giving away. I know I mentioned a long time ago that we're gonna be doing a stereo in it. And now's the time to do it. So getting that thing ready for one of you guys to win. RaceRebuildRepeat.com. Get your merch. The hot seller is the gas can. It's got our gas can logo on the back. This thing's pretty awesome. Uh, and again, thank you to everyone flowing down the screen over here. Or is it up? Is it up? I think it's up. Thank you guys. Uh, anyway, though, seriously, you guys were the first people to support us and have our backs in this whole thing. And you're keeping the channel afloat. So really appreciate all you guys over here. Every single one of you. And we'll have an update on Brandon coming soon as well. He's uh, doing really good. He's finally home. He's happy. He's back in his right state of mind and uh, his recovery is going really great. So shouts out to BB for holding it down over there in Fort Wayne. Shouts out to all you guys over here on the right side of the screen and uh, shouts out to Frank for letting me use his shop. So I know we do a lot of stuff here all the time, but uh, ultimately this is his shop. This is his tool. So everything I used, I cleaned, I put back the right way. I didn't abuse anything, didn't break anything. So. Thank you again, Frank, and uh, thank you guys for watching. We'll see you really, really soon. Bye.